Hey everyone, Eva Thompson here. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about where retroactive jealousy stems from. I get this question quite a lot and a lot of the time people don't know where it stems from, which is absolutely normal. All they know is that it's really painful and they're really, really suffering in their life today. So I'm going to be giving you a few reasons why RJ might exist in your life in the first place. A quick disclaimer though before we get into it, these um, four reasons that I'm going to mention today in this video are based on my experience as a rapid transformational therapist. I've been helping people overcome RJ for just a little bit over a year now and so whatever I talk about is going to be based on my experience. The reason I'm saying this is because I believe that everyone is different and everyone's experiences are valid. Everyone's got different pasts, different traumas, different childhoods, different situations, different scenarios, which is why I love working with people one-on-one. -on -one. Everyone's unique. So if you feel like none of these resonate with you, that's fine. It doesn't mean that your feelings aren't valid or that your experiences aren't valid. It just means that, you know, it's a different case scenario. It doesn't mean that you can't overcome it. It doesn't mean that you're an alien or that you're different because remember, the same mind that came up with these thoughts is the same mind that can get rid of them. So with that being said, let's get straight into it. The first reason why you might be suffering from rich tract of jealousy today is fear of being compared or fear of getting hurt. And I wanna talk a little bit about this because when you get hurt, if you've gotten hurt in your previous relationships or if you grew up and your mum or your dad abandoned you or it, it was abusive and you experienced pain in some point of your life, um, it's very likely that a part of you on some subconscious level wants to protect you and is sabotaging the relationship that you're in today because it doesn't want you to get hurt again. Now our mind is given to us for to keep us alive, right? It's for our survival on this planet. Your mind's job is to, mo to move you away from pain. And if in the past relationships cause you a lot of pain, when you get into a new one and you start developing feelings and emotions, which is when RJ comes up, that is when RJ pops up, right? Because there's this part of you that's afraid, that doesn't want you to get hurt, that doesn't want you to, you know, experience what you may have experienced in the past. And this doesn't necessarily have to do just with previous relationships. If you had a childhood where your mum or dad betrayed you, lied to you, didn't meet your needs, the whole self-sabotage thing can come into play quite a bit. Um, and as far as the comparison side of things goes, if you thought that even if you were to be compared, you will, would still measure up, you wouldn't be so worried of being compared. But the reason that you are worried is, afraid, is because you're afraid that you may not measure up to whoever you may be comparing yourself to. So the first thing that I come across a lot is fear of getting hurt, of fear of betrayal and fear of uh, being compared in case you don't measure up. And this can also have a massive effect on your self-esteem and your belief system regarding what you're worth. So what I say to a lot of people is, realistically, if you're suffering from RJ and you're in a healthy relationship, um, you're with someone that supports you, that loves you, that only wants to be with you, for some reason you're having difficulty accepting that and believing that. Now whether that's fear of um, of again getting hurt, fear of or not feeling worthy enough, sorry, not feeling lovable enough, not feeling like you deserve it. There's a lot of things that can come into play here. So the second reason is getting your worth tangled up in your partner's past. A lot of the time I hear the phrase, I don't wanna be with my partner that has done this, this and this because their worth has gone down and I'm too good for them. I hear this mainly from men which is fine, this is not a judgement, I'm not attacking men. I work with a lot of men, I've helped a lot of men overcome RJ and I get very inspired when I see a man wanting to look at his issues and better himself for his partner. So that, again, this is not an attack on men, but I'm just saying that it comes up more in men. We expect our partner to make us look better when that's not what they're there for. Your partner's not there to make you look a certain way. You know how people go out to the store and they 
buy an expensive car or they buy an expensive jacket, some expensive brand. So they can be seen by people and people can be like, oh wow, look, they look good. They must be important. Think about it like that. And instead of the car or the shoes or the jacket, put your partner in the place of that object, right? And you say, my partner um, has done this and this and this, and so their value has gone down. And so now they're not worthy anymore or they're not as worthy as me. They're not there to boost your worth. They're not there to make you look good. You know, you need to find that pride in yourself, find that enoughness in yourself first and not expect it from your partner again because they're not an object that is supposed to be there to make you look better. Thirdly, we've got jealousy because they have our partner has lived out experiences that we haven't. And this can be quite a big one. On the outside, it we might portray that we despise them for doing so, but a lot of the time, um, we can't rationalize what they did because we've never had those experiences. We can't understand it, we can't wrap, up, wrap our mind around it. And this causes an issue for two reasons. Number one, because your mind doesn't like what is unfamiliar. Your mind is wired to make you, to drive you closer to what is familiar. Um, and so if they've done something that to you is unfamiliar and you can't rationalize it and you think to yourself, I can't understand how they could have done this, why, etc, etc. Um, it can cause, it can cause RJ, it can cause the mind to constantly think about this because you need to understand how they could have done this because you would have never done it. If they've had an experience that you haven't had, okay, that's fine, that's, don't feel guilty about that, don't feel bad, but just ask yourself, do you want to break up and go have those experiences or do you want to stay in the relationship? Because if the relationship is hindering you and you want to go out and have all this fun and do different things and experiment and the relationship is stopping you and you resent your partner, that, then that's one thing. It's, that's different to, I haven't experienced what they've experienced and I feel jealous. Ask yourself the question, what do I want more, my partner or the experience? And this is where I want to say to you, be very, very mindful of the upbringing and the beliefs and the way of thinking that you have been brought up with in and around and that your partner has. And I'll tell you why. We grow up and we come onto this planet and we're taught things. So for example, you may have been brought up around people that were Catholic or that were really religious. And you, even though you may not be strongly religious today, still those beliefs are somewhere ingrained in you and you were taught from a young age what was right and what was wrong and so everyone is taught on some degree what is right what is wrong what is acceptable and what is not acceptable what will make you a good person what will, what will make you a bad person and then we go throughout life and we follow those rules but for example for you, one night stands might not be okay. You might have grown up in a small community or you might have grown up with pe people that were really conservative or maybe you just never felt the need to go down that route. Now your partner, maybe they grew up differently. Maybe their family taught them different things. Maybe they weren't taught that one night stands are, t are a terrible thing. Maybe they weren't taught that, you know, whatever experience they whatever they did that bothers you so much maybe they maybe they weren't taught that it was such a terrible thing like you were and so it, they did what they did not because they're a terrible person but just because at the time especially the way they grew up you know people around them they didn't go into it probably thinking this is a terrible thing they probably went into it thinking it's acceptable because they were told it was. Now, this doesn't mean that you're right and they're wrong or vice versa. It just means that when you become more aware that it's not just your way, there's different perspectives, ideas in this world, right? We live in a world of, again, I've said this before, seven point something billion at this point. There's different ideas, there's different beliefs, there's different religions, there's different everything. And yours or mine doesn't cancel out anyone else's. So I can go out and say, one night stands are terrible, you're gonna go to hell, whatever, whatever. 
Does that mean that that's true? No, that's my opinion. And I might choose to go throughout life, which I don't, but I might choose to go throughout life believing that and living that out. But that's, that doesn't make it a rule. That doesn't make it the law. It just means that it's a, an opinion, a perception. And the more you understand that your partner's not wrong or right, they were just different. You know, the way they were brought up was different. Their ideas, their beliefs were different. That doesn't make them a bad person though. And focus on the beliefs and the ideas that you guys have today. So I've talked about this in a previous video. Do the beliefs and values that you have today match? Don't judge them based on beliefs and values that they had in the past. Because again, it's very rarely it's like wrong or right, black and white. If they were taught different things, if they weren't taught that doing this and that is such a bad thing, having lots of partners is terrible. If they weren't taught that, if they grew up with around people that thought differently and acted differently and their friends acted differently and it was, they were living in a different place, whatever, you know, circumstances shift. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. So the last reason why people um, experience RJ is because they put their partner on a pedestal. And what that means is when you meet someone, you form in your head, you form ideas, you form beliefs, you, you, you place expectations on this person, you think they are this kind of person. In your mind, you think you are in control because you've put them in a box and you've labeled them this, this, this and this. And you, again, you place expectations in the first few months of knowing them. And you put them on a pedestal, right? They're this angel that um, you view as maybe pure or they make you feel so good they never would have done this or this you know in your mind you might be thinking no they never could have done this they never could have done that and then you ask them a few questions you know as the months go by as the years go by whatever and they end up telling you that hey you know what I did this this and this and this in the past and because you had placed expectations on them without them knowing they weren't actively participating in you and your thought process when you first met them you go through this shock and it's almost like they fall from the pedestal and everything's ruined but you put them up there you put them on the pedestal you put them above you and at the end of the day they're just a human being I think it's very important to realize that your partner is just a human being. They've made mistakes, they've had experiences, they've lived life, they've grown up, they've formed beliefs, they have values, beliefs that maybe now have changed. They've, again, they've experienced things. They're not this person that you had in your imagination when you first met them and you put them, you labeled them all these different things, you placed expectations on them and now you're disappointed. We do this thing with RJ where we expect them to be some pure, amazing, holy thing. And when we find out the truth, everything comes crashing down for us. And I've mentioned this before and I really believe in it, but the this, a stable foundation in a relationship is built when you both accept that you are just human, that you have had experiences in the past, that you've made mistakes, that you, you know, that everything isn't perfect in a relationship, that there will be struggles, that you will argue, that you will disagree. But the beauty lies in that today, you're both choosing each other every day. The beauty lies in not giving up and in knowing that relationships aren't easy a lot of the time and that they require work. Not in wanting them to be some, someone that they're not, wanting them to be some perfect, pure thing that they're just not. They're a human being, you're both just human beings and the quicker you realize this and you embrace this concept um, instead of wanting them again to be something that they're not, the stronger the relationship becomes because you, you're grounded, right? You're not up here, you haven't placed them up here, all these expectations, all these wants, all these beliefs. No, you're both here and when you realize that it's easier, it's a lot easier, and the relationship feels a lot more stable. And I know, because I used to do this, but the quicker you realize that they're just a human being, and maybe they grew up differently, maybe their values were different at some point, maybe their beliefs were different, does that make them wrong on you right? No. Does that make them a bad person? No. Have their beliefs changed now? Do your beliefs and values match today? Probably. 
if you're together. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Those were the four main reasons of why people suffer from rich track of jealousy, in my experience. Now, of course, are there more reasons? Yes, if you don't resonate with anything, or maybe you resonate with all of them, or one of them, or two of them. Either way, know that your feelings are valid, and know that you can get over this. Know that the same mind that came up with these thoughts is the same mind that can get over them. You don't have to live like this forever. Also, if you've got any further reasons of why you think people might suffer from this, um, I know the double standards thing with, um, in society, women sleeping around makes them less than is something that comes into play a lot as well. Um, but if you've got any other thoughts or ideas, please comment them down in the comment section below. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you are new. And I will see you guys next time.